What gives credibility to Christianity is the supernatural. Outside of the supernatural, Christianity will be a mere religion. Now, chapter 14, verse 3. It's a long time therefore both they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the world of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Signs and wonders are proofs of his approval. Anywhere you see signs is an indication God is there doing signs and wonders. You understand hear me well? If you are a believer, you have been born into the supernatural world. Say with me, I'm born into the supernatural world. Miracles are real. And you can walk them out. You can what? Miracles are real and you can walk them out. You don't wait for miracles, you walk miracles out. In the gifts of the Spirit, in 1 Corinthians 12, every 7 down to 11, but in verse 10, he said to another, now let me read verse 7 precisely, it says, but the manifestation of the Spirit, capital S, which means the Holy Spirit, is given to every man to profit with that. So every child of God is, is supposed to be operating the supernatural. Every child of God, every one of us, is not a for a few of us. Every child of including you, is supposed to operate in the supernatural. He said the Spirit is given to every one of us, not given to some few people. Listen carefully. The same Holy Ghost at the boy has the same Holy Ghost you have. It doesn't have more Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost Benin has, the same Holy Ghost you have. Because God is not big, it's not small. God is constant. The same Holy Ghost I have, the same Holy Ghost you have. It depends on what we do after that. On the day of Pentecost, the same Holy Ghost that came upon Peter, James, and John. The same Holy Ghost that came upon Colinus. But Colinus don't do anything. He never had a less Holy Ghost, the same Holy Ghost. He said, for the Spirit is given to every one of us. To profit, it depends on what you do after you are given. Are you getting what? So the world is waiting for your manifestation, not for your explanation. They are waiting for you to manifest your sonship as a child of God. The endless of the creature are waiting for what? The manifestation of the sons of God, not for the explanation. And after today, you will become a miracle yourself. Amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. In verse 10, it said to another, the walking of miracles, that's 1 Corinthians 12, 10. To another, it talked about the gifts of the Spirit. Is that clear, sir? The gift, it said to another, the walking of miracles. One of the gifts of the Spirit is walking of miracles, not waiting for miracles. It said walking of what? God did not say waiting for miracles. You don't wait for miracles, you walk miracles. Listen carefully. <laughs> Read your Bible. God does not say wait for miracles. He said walk miracles. Walk what? He said walk of the walking. That means there's a duty. Listen carefully. Bring it back again. Bring verse 9 for better understanding of those who may not know it. He said, bring verse 8. He said, for one is given the spirit of what? What of wisdom? To another, what of knowledge? By the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same Spirit. To another, gifts of what? Healing is a gift. By the same Spirit. To another, it is a gift of miracles. He said to another, walking. When it came to miracles, he said to another, walking of miracles. Walking of what? Many have been wasting because they are waiting for miracles. He said, walk it out. Don't, don't just walk the miracle out. So I hear. So I'm going to tell you how to walk miracles. How to walk what? How do I walk miracles? Number one, you must believe that you are created for signs and wonders. 
You must believe that you are created for what? Signs and wonders. In Mark chapter 16, 17 and 18, down to 20. 17, 18 and 20. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? In my name shall they cast out plural devils. Any kind of devil you can cast him, the devil out. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, play little with them. And, sh and they shall drink deadly thing. It shall not work. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Somebody will lay hands on the sick. That means you have so much healing virtue. You will lay hands on the sick. Then you not to become sick. It's an anathema. You shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. How can you that will lay hands on the sick become sick? Oh my God. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? He said you will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. But now you are saying you are sick. So something is wrong. Are you hearing me? Are you getting me? In verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs. From this day, every word you speak, even when you go to evangelism, miracles will be confirmed with them. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. Please hear me, people of God. Stop waiting for miracles if you don't want to waste in life. Do something. Now hear this and hear me well. The scripture you don't believe will never produce. It's the part of the scripture you believe that will manifest in your life. Listen carefully. <laughs> I've come to realize that any part of the Bible you don't believe will never manifest. If you don't believe in eternal life, you will suffer human life. If you don't believe in prosperity, you will remain a poor man. It's a part of the Bible you believe that you manifest. Is that clear? If you don't believe in signs and wonders, you'll be a senior, senior, senior theologian. You may have all the degrees of theology. It is a part of the world you believe. But I believe this book. Say with me, I believe the word. In John chapter 14, verse 12, very, very I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall you do. Jesus is the one speaking. He said, if you believe the things he did, you will do. He said, huh? I'm going to do what Jesus do. Now he's talking. And greater works than this shall he do. Because I go to my father. True? When I read that scripture, that scripture is real. Jesus did not use the shadow to heal the sick. Peter used the shadow. Because Peter believed the word. There was no way Jesus said a shadow healed the sick. But he said greater works. That means he has endowed us to do greater things than him. So here. And Peter's shadow healed what? The sick. Because Peter believed what Jesus said. And to as many as believe God's word, you will begin to swim in signs and wonders. Amen. Say amen like a child of God. Amen. But right why do that? Exodus 4.17 And thou shall take this rod in thy hand wherewith thou shalt do signs. And thou shalt take. That means it connotes responsibility. It is I give you rod. If I say take, you must stretch your hands. He said you will take this rod. Means Take means responsibility. Take means what's what? You want to walk in the miraculous? Go and take the rod. With which you do what? Science. God did not carry the rod for Moses. Moses carried it. There was no way God began to say, Moses, even when Moses cried to God, he said, hey, I will do my part, but your part must be done. Take that rod, face the water. I won't do that part for you. We have been waiting for miracles. Miracles have been waiting for us. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, Thou shalt take this rod. 
Now, what is the Lord? And who is the Lord? Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. Out of the stem of Jesse shall come forth a rod. Is that true? That rod is Jesus. Is who? Jesus. And Jesus is the word. In the beginning, and the word, and the word. Now, Jesus is, sorry, the rod is who? Jesus. And Jesus is the word. Revelation 19 verse 13. And his name is called the word of God. His name is called what? So Jesus is who? The word of God. So God is saying, take the word with which thou shalt do science. So we walk the word to produce science. We walk what? The walking of miracles simply walking the word. Walking of miracles simply means walking the word. So when you walk the word, you become a miracle. Hello. Walking of miracles simply means what? Walking the word. So walk the word to do what? Science. You will produce science from today. Amen. Shout amen. amen. When you do what the rod commands, miracles are born. That's all. Take the rod. What do we mean by miracle? What is, what's a miracle? Miracles are the deliberate acts of God provoked by the desperate faith of men through the word of God. They are the deliberate acts of God provoked by the desperate faith of men through what? The word of God. So all I need to do if I want to walk in the supernatural is to hook up to the word and obey whatever the word says to me. Is that clear, sir? He said, whatever I tell you to do, do it. John 2, 5. And they went forth, preach everywhere, and the Lord walking with them, confirming their words with signs, following. May signs follow you from today. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. So when you put the word of God to walk in faith, God is committed to confirm with signs and wonders. So what you do with the word of God is what puts you in command of the supernatural. You can't operate in the supernatural with common sense. You operate in the supernatural with the word of God. Not with common sense. Common sense can't operate supernatural. You operate with the what? With the word of God. God sense. In 1 Corinthians 2, 13 to 14. We things also we speak, not in the words with man's wisdom, teach it, but with the Holy Ghost, teach it. Comparing spiritual things with what? Spiritual. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. I'm going to tell you something that will baffle you. Do you know negative medical reports, people believe them? Even church people. They say, I'm going to show you. They say, doctor just giving a report to Mr. A. And the man who will not carry the report said, they said, two weeks. The cancer, two weeks. Two weeks is two weeks. So I won't use myself, I'll use Mr. A. So everywhere he carries the report, he said, that, you know, that specialist just gave a report that two weeks, maximum two weeks. It's well, oh, two weeks. Now, he believed the report that two weeks is remaining for him to die. Look at it now. They say, leukemia, blood cancer. What did mango do? Cancer, cancer. Look at it here. And he believes it with everything. Yet, he does not believe this book. I'm going somewhere. He believed the doctor's report, but he does not believe the word. He does not believe God's report. He has not shown anybody what God said, but he has shown everybody what the doctor said. He never said this is what God said. Never. He has not shown anybody. He said, see, God told me this. But he said, see what the doctor told me. You know, and that doctor, when he says it's final. So what God says is not final. 
I'm going somewhere. <laughs> Who's report will you believe? Not singing, not talking. Your actions you show. Someone says he has leukemia, he has HIV, he has cancer. That's a negative medical report and it's falsehood. It's what? It's falsehood. Because you can't have Jesus Christ and that sickness together in you. Science verdict is contrary to scriptures. Science points you to the problem, but the solution is with God. I don't dispute, please don't misquote me. What they told you is a fact, but what the word of God says is the truth. So the same way you are carrying the report going everywhere, carry his report to show everybody. So here. Now I'm going to be very practical now. <laughs> In 1 Timothy 6.20, as a scientific and science verdict is contrary to scriptures, it's falsehood. It's what? It's falsehood. Old Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoiding profane and vain blabblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. You know what God is saying? I'm going to use my testimony so you understand it better. My eyes were yellow. When I mean yellow, yellow has degrees. This one was yellow to a point where a consultant came to the room. He says, well, apartheid. I could not move. Every organ in me was paining me. There was a day my eyes turned. And the consultant came to the room and lifted my eyes. When he lifted my eyes, he turned. He said, he didn't know I was looking at him. He did like this. He invariably was saying, hopeless. I got the message. That was science. That was what? That this case is hopeless. But I saw from the word of God in Matthew 8, 17 himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. Science told me you will die. And God told me he took. So I was between two opinions. Either to agree with science and die or to agree with this truth and walk out of dead. So here. And I stood with the integrity of God's word. And I said, I shut the door. And I said, nobody prays again. Everybody prayed for me, including Rehan Bonke. A blessed memory. It was not his fault. My faith needed to rise. I told them, nobody prays. Nobody. I told my wife, nobody prays again. I shut the door and I went with my last strength. And as I was eating espresso of faith, my mentor and the Bible, I saw light came himself. I said, if you took it, then I can't have it. I said, Satan, if Jesus took my infirmities, then I can't have what he took. I walked out of dead gallantly. And I'm here preaching. And we preach till old age. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must not agree with anything contrary to God's word. That's where I'm going. You must not what? If you must enjoy the miraculous, you must agree with the word of God. That's where I'm going. Anything contrary to God's word, don't accept it. It's falsehood. It's what? Falsehood. You only agree with the word of God. So here. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can't have the word and have cancer. Cancer is a fact. The truth is, he took. And you shall know what? He says, you shall know the facts. Yet this until you disregard the devil, what the devil placed on you, you will end up a victim of his scheming. Until you disregard what the devil placed on you, you become a victim of his what? Scheming. You must avoid falling cheaply to the devil's lies. 
You must agree with the word of God. So I hear. Are you hearing me? The lie was that my eyes were yellow. And it, you know the thing? Let me tell you, you're shocked. The thing is a small matter. When my eyes were yellow, and I saw it took, he said, go and look at the mirror. Your eyes are yellow. You will die. And I said to him, shut up! I looked at the mirror. There are two mirrors. The physical mirror and the mirror of the world. He said, go and look at the physical mirror. This thing you are saying, look at your eyes, yellow. You will die. And I told him, shut up! The mirror of the world said, he took. So the more I stood on it, in three days, all the symptoms vanished. Oh, them. Pains gone, eyes white. This guy is strong, perfect. No part of my liver or heart is having an issue. Yeah, balance. But if I never stood on the integrity of the word, I never allowed the devil's light to prevail, you wouldn't have seen me here. Do you understand where I'm going now? So which report do you believe? Doctors have their work they do. They only point you to the situation that's before you, but don't take their verdict. The verdict of them is not the final. Are you hearing me? If it's final, even when doctors have problems, they say this thing is beyond us. Are you getting me? That shows that they have their limitations. It's not every sickness doctors can treat. Hope you know. There are many diseases they tell you they don't have anything, you know, they don't manage. They use the word, we, are just, we have to just manage this case. That they are telling you <laughs> it's beyond them. Is there any anti dead drug in the hospital? But Jesus he specializes in that one. So I hear. Our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who we went about doing good? What was the good he went about doing? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. As 10 to the 8th. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. He went about doing good. And what was the good he went about doing? Healing all. Including you. So every sick in the name of Jesus. I pronounce you healed. Amen. Every sick in the name of Jesus. I pronounce you healed. Amen. What was the good he went about doing? He let all that were praise of the devil for God was with him. And Jesus cried the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8. And his name we shall cast out demons. Whatever we ask in his name, we will do it. So I command in the name of Jesus, be healed of every sickness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. I command every satanic force to clear from you right now. Amen. Every terminal disease is terminated in your body. In the name of Jesus. Please believe the word of God. Believe what? He says he has raised us up together and made us sit together with him in where? In Christ. Ephesians 2, 6. You need a far above mentality to operate in the supernatural. Where you are, Satan can't come. And all his works. That's Ephesians 2, 6. He said, we are far above principalities and we are far above the Ephesians 1 if you read 19 to 21. Far above all. Let me say this to you. Can a man be pregnant? Except for the young pregnancy. Can a man be pregnant? Can a man be pregnant? So for a man to trouble himself that he's pregnant, he has lost his senses. So to say you are sick as a believer, it's an abuse of redemption. Because you can't be sick. Can, I, can a man be pregnant? Can any man be pregnant? Okay. All you need to know is to know better than your enemy so you can take him for a ride. Whatever is not of God that is in you, I curse it in the name of Jesus. So walking the world is what makes a believer a wonder to his world. The word of God is instrument for working of miracles. For working of what? Miracles. Every discovery from the Bible that is mixed with faith in your heart becomes an instrument for working of the supernatural in your life. 
Let me read this to you. It's a very simple scripture, but the Holy Ghost drew more light. And I saw simple light. <laughs> Every sick will be healed. Everything in, on your body tormenting you will clear this hour. Yeah. You know the scripture? In every wedding, they read it. Every wedding, they read that scripture. But you know, God just showed you light. Ephesians 5, 23. There's no wedding you go to. They don't read Ephesians 5. When they want to join husband and wife. True? The last part, I'm going to show you something. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of what? Who is the head of the church? Who is the head of the church? And he is the savior of the body. This body. He is the one that saves this body. Jesus is the one who saves this body. He saved your soul from sin. He saved your body from sickness. <laughs> That's all I'm going to use to pray tonight. So may he save me from sin. And save my body from sickness. Get up and just, just meditate on that scripture again. Say with me, he saved me from sin. And saved my body from sickness. Who is your savior? Now, who is your savior? No, say, who is your savior? You're sure? Look at it. He is the savior of my body. The body. Is the savior of which body? He is the savior of which body? He is the savior of the body. Are you the one? This is the body. True? The body of Christ. And we are, I, we, we are the body of Christ. He is the savior of the body. Just the way he saved us from sin. He, saved, he said you are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. I saved your body with a price. Therefore, whatever comes on your body is illegal. I bought this property for you. Just imagine, listen. <laughs> somebody paid a property and gave the receipt to you. And then somebody go, went there to trespass. Will you keep quiet? You will react? So every sickness on you is illegal. Is what? It's illegal. The, that sickness trespassed. Your duty now is to eject it with understanding. As a sudden, you are not permitted to be here. You are unlawful occupant of this body. You came to occupy this body unlawfully. I have been bought with a price. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, get out of my body now. You are, you are the one to say that. Say, you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spiritual God. We all know of the spirit, but the body, everyone just say, you know his pain is so that. Die! React! I reacted when, when Satan afflicted me. I said, Satan, take your hands off my body now. Sickness left. He knows when you know. He said, you are, you, this cancer, you are an illegal in my body. You are an illegal occupant. You came to occupy my property, the property that Jesus paid the price for. Now get out in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, you are illegal. You are what? Illegal. illegal. Kidney failure, you are what? Illegal. Cancer, you are? Illegal. Whatever disease, you are what? Illegal. You are not permitted to occupy my body. You must leave my body now. Because Jesus has paid a price. He is the savior of my body. Now listen. If somebody pays the property for you and gave you the receipt, will you go back to the person again? You enforce the law. Going back to the person, <laughs> they say, I cannot enter. The person will say, I'm giving you a receipt. And show them, tender the receipt to them that this is what I pay. And take your goods and go. So you tender the word of God to the devil and say, Satan, this is the word of God. I've been saved. My body is saved by Jesus. Therefore, you, are not, you came here as an intruder. Get out of my body. Now. Leave my body. They are saying, my name shall cast out devils. Cast him out. Tell him it's illegal. With the holy anger. 
leave my body. Leave my body. You are not permitted to occupy this body. The law you don't enforce. No law enforcement agent can carry it out. You are the one to enforce the law. Sometimes we brought the property to this church in a place called Morocco Town. And some people went and occupied the property legally. And then we took them to court. They took us to court or whatever. We went to court. And then the judgment was passed that they occupied the place illegally. And people came and t- officially, they threw their things outside. That was when I saw that law has power. They threw their things outside. We went back and took t- possession of our property. And we brought it down to build a church there. The, if we didn't go to exercise our authority, they would have been staying there today. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that sickness is in your body because you have refused to exercise your what? Authority. It's an illegal occupant. Legal what? Now I say authority with the word of God. Even if you don't get any scripture, you say he's the savior of what? Which body now? So he saved his body? How can he? You know, he saved your spirit and soul. You made altar call. Is I'm, I'm born again. I'm born again. You don't you know that he saved your body? Why must your body now be getting sickness every day? Tell that devil. Get out of my body now. You occupy my body illegally. Are you ready? You are going to pray in the name of who? Jesus. With the holy anger. Look at that part. Say, Satan, get out of my body. Cancer, leave my body now. I have been bought with a price. Therefore, I must glorify God in this body. Are you hearing me? If you, if you are sitting, put your hand in that place and then with your thought, you command that sickness to go with this deep revelation that Jesus has paid the price. Combine Ephesians 2, 5, 23, the path, and 1 Corinthians 6, what? 20. And say, yes, my skin shall come like that of a child. If you read Job 23, 21 to 25, he say, his body shall come like what? A child. So I hear. Got it here. He said, then is gracious unto him. I said, deliver him from going out to the I have found who? Who is the ransom? Jesus. He said, his flesh, 25, shall be fresher than a child. That means your body will return back to where it's supposed to be. But you are the one who, you are saying, oh God, oh God, God, say you now, exercise your authority. And this, oh God, oh God, has told the devil, get out of my body. What are you doing here? You himself took and you're saying, you, I, I have, get out. When he saw my reaction, he left. This is how Satan behaves. Life story. A woman in the UK, long ago, had a dog. And she was going to enter the train to, to go out. The dog followed her. She said, go, 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 go. The dog was following her. You know how dogs behave? On her legs, running. She said, go back. The dog refused. The dog followed her. She got to the train was coming. He said, go back. The dog. She said, go back. The dog ran away. That's how the devil behaves. This sickness go now. It will be the more it will sickness now. I they tell you go now. It will be, it will be, it will be sickness. <laughs> go! Come on, get out. That's how it will be. we have we have been petting sickness. You are seeing cancer. You every day you get hey, this cancer blessing won't kill you. <laughs> Which day have you reacted with your last night? Take to the Austin, Joel Austin's mother. This early hours was meditating. I had to watch her video. She took her last trend. You know, she has a video where she decided healing scriptures. It's on, on uh, YouTube. If you tap her name, you see in the healing scriptures, just quoting them. That woman was given a few days to die. In the 80s, she's alive to today. She has not gone to, her husband has gone to be with the Lord long ago. She collected 40 to 42 scriptures in her mouth and squeezed cancer. How yeah, can you be playing? It's one day just like that. <laughs> the thing is, what can you carry black? <laughs> Your body has become an experimental product. They tear your body like pig. Today they open here. Tomorrow they open here. Tomorrow they open here. I see laughing. All these, all these medical students will use your body as an experiment. <laughs> they enter there and they say, that one is a case. Go and study it. <laughs> My friend, react. Do what? React. I'm going to give you five to seven minutes. You will look at your body. He said, this body, you are not permitted to be afflicted from today. If you're living in sand health, you keep authority. So I sit down and say, this one, no, I, don't go, I won't go near. But the ones who are afflicted, you will react. You say, today I take my place and I command you foul spirit. You have been bought with a pride. Therefore, you are not permitted. Whether any sickness, cause sickness, no, no matter the name, get out of my body now. Are you ready? Go ahead in the name of Jesus.
Jesus is Savior of my body. Declare it. He is the Savior of my body. Body, you have been saved by him. Savior is the devil in the name of Jesus. Get out of my body, you foul spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Faith is in degrees. Put your hand where you are. Anybody who faith is not up to that level. In the name of Jesus. I take my place and I take my authority in the name of Jesus. I command that foul spirit behind that sickness. Jesus paid a price for your body. Therefore, it's not permitted to attack that body anymore. Get out of that body in the name of Jesus. Out. Leave that body in Jesus' name. And your health restored. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. It is done. It is done. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Go and have this weekend as a blessed weekend. Your testimonies will be sporadic. Before you recover, from another one has come. All your long awaited expectations be released. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, it will be evident that things have changed. Not one person will remain with any disease. That disease and sickness has left you and is left forever. Amen. It has left, it has left, you see it no more. Amen. It will live forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. You and everything concerning you will enjoy God's grace. Amen. Covered with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Enjoy safety and progress. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And here God said to me, no one amongst us will die. We shall live to declare the good works of God. In Jesus' name.